This lesson deals with the solution to exam number one. You can find this near the end of the ECE202 ebook. Exam number one had four problems with varying weights from 24 to 26. This was an exam that I actually gave when I taught the course recently, and based on the standard deviation and the average on that exam, I have the following curve. From 90% to 100% was the A range, 80% to 89 is the B range, 70% to 79% the C range, and then from 60 to 69% the D range. If you had less than 59%, that was not a passing grade. Problem number one had several parts. The first one was to find the phase representations of the following time domain functions. Given that V1 is 47 times the cosine of 377t plus 62 degrees, putting that into phasor form, if I do polar, the magnitude is 47 and the angle is 62. That was worth four points and I gave partial credit for each of the two answers. The current I1 is equal to 14 times the sine of 2000t minus 13 degrees milliamps. Our phase representation is based on using a cosine function, so I need to convert the sine to a cosine. That's simply taking the value of the angle and subtracting 90 degrees. So the magnitude is 14 milli. You can put the milli here or at the end with the amperes. And then my phase angle is minus 13, minus 90, or minus 103 degrees. This was again worth four points. Give partial credit for the magnitude and the angle, two points apiece. Also take one point off if you don't include the units. The third function was V2 is equal to minus 881 times the cosine of 4T minus 25 degrees. Now our magnitude doesn't include the minus sign, so we need to do a phase shift to put that minus sign inside here. It'll be the same as shifting this by 180 degrees. 180 degrees minus 25 is, is 155 degrees. That's the angle here. And my magnitude is 881, and units are volts. This is worth four points two points each for the magnitude and the angle, and then a minus one if there are no units. Given the following phasors, could you find the time domain functions? Our phasor has a magnitude and angle, and we're going to use that to find our function, and then we need to know the frequency to be able to put the final expression together. So I'm going to use my calculator and plug in the real part and the imaginary part, and then take the square of those and add them together, and then take the square root. This magnitude was, was 9.22 micro, and that's going to be a little bit bigger than either of these two because it's the hypotenuse. The angle is going to be in the first quadrant, a little shorter than 45 degrees because this term is smaller than this term. The angle turned out to be 40.6 degrees. So 9.22 micro times the cosine of 2 pi times 770. That turned out to be 4.84k times t plus the phase angle of 40.6 degrees. And the units here are amps. was worth 4. 1 for the magnitude, 1 for the angle, and then 2 for the frequency. And then minus 1 if you didn't include a unit. For V3, do the same thing. I'll plot this in my calculator and I get a magnitude a little bit bigger than the largest of these two, and I got 37.4. I am in the fourth quadrant because this term is negative, and I found it was 34.1 degrees. My final answer then would be 37.4 times the cosine of 2 pi f, which again is 4.84k times t, and then the angle is a minus 34.1 degrees, and the units are volts. Lastly, what is the impedance of an inductance whose value is 220 millihenries at 60 hertz? Well, the impedance is j omega l, j times 2 pi f, and that's going to be 2 pi times 60, and then times 0.22. And that turns out to be J, 82.94 ohms. This was worth four points, no partial credit. Problem number two is taking this RC circuit and finding Z in in polar form, and then to find V out in steady state. Given that the input is eight cosine of 377T plus 25 degrees. From our chapter eight notes, we have a three-step algorithm for solving problems like this. And the first step is to transform from the time domain to the frequency domain. So our voltage source is a cosine function, so we'll take the magnitude and the angle, and that'll be our phasor voltage. The resistance stays the same, and our capacitance becomes an impedance of minus J over omega C. Omega is 377 and C is 56 microfarads, and that gives me a minus J 47.37 ohms. Step two is to perform the analysis in the frequency domain. And the input impedance will be the series combination of R and C, and the impedances are 91 ohms and minus J 47.37. Put this into polar form, punch it into our calculator, real part, imaginary part, and we'll take the square root of the sum of the squares, and that turns out to be 102.6. Our angle will be the arc tangent of the imaginary over the real, but we're going to be in the fourth quadrant. This is shorter than this, so the magnitude of the angle will be less than 45 degrees. So minus 27 and a half seems reasonable. Next, to solve for V out, I could use a voltage divider. I have two elements in series that share the same current, and the voltage across the capacitor is the impedance of the capacitor, which is minus J 47.37, over the sum of that with the resistance, which is our uh, Zn, which we already found to be 102.6 at angle minus 27.5. The numerator is going to have a magnitude of 47.37, and 
we're on the transition between the third and fourth quadrant, so it's a minus 90 degrees. Putting everything in polar form then, we can find the magnitude and angle by just doing simple algebra. So eight times 47.37 divided by 102.6 is the overall magnitude, and that's 3.69. The angle of the numerator is 25 plus or minus 90, and then minus the angle of the denominator, which would then be a plus 27.5. That turns out to be a minus 37.5 degrees. Lastly, we can transform back into the time domain, putting the cosine of omega t between our magnitude and our angle. So z in is 102.6 at angle minus 27.5 degrees, and the units are ohms. This is worth 12 points, and I give six points for the magnitude and six for the angle. And then if you left off the units, and not a minus one. V out of t then is 3.69 times the cosine of 377t minus 37.5. This is worth 14 points. I give five for the magnitude, five for the angle, and four points for the frequency. In problem number three, we're given a frequency domain input and asked to find the current in a resistor using current divider and to put that current in rectangular form. When we need to find the impedance of the inductance, which is J omega L. We're given the frequency of 740 kilohertz, so I'll multiply that by two pi, and that turns out to be 4.65 megaradians per second. If you multiply that times 470 microhenries, you get 2.185 K. We could use the impedance current divider, which says that if you want the current in this element, we take the other impedance, which would be the J 2.185K, divided by the sum of the two impedances. Let's put this into polar form for the numerator and denominator. And we can do some quick algebra to find the overall result. So this is going to be a magnitude of 2.185K at an angle of 90 degrees. Put these in my calculator, and I'll get a magnitude as bigger than either of the two. And the angle is going to be in the first quadrant, but be less than 45 degrees in magnitude because this is shorter than this. 24.9 seems reasonable. The overall magnitude then is 200 micro times 2.185K divided by 5.183K, and that's 84.3 micro. The angle is the angle of the numerator, which is zero plus 90 minus the angle of the denominator, and I get a result of 65.1 degrees. Putting that into rectangular form, I'll take the magnitude times the cosine, and then the magnitude times the sine. And again, you can do this inside your calculator, with two inputs, two outputs. Final answer is 35.5 micro plus J76.46 micro and then overall units of amps. You can put the micro inside or outside the brackets. It means the same thing. This is worth 26 points, but I broke it into pieces. So getting the equation for isobar correct, that was worth 13. If you could then do the algebra for whatever you found here, I gave six points. And if you could convert that into rectangular form, seven points. The fourth problem is given a frequency domain circuit to find the impedance Z1 looking back to the right, Z2, and then Z equivalent. And we're given the impedances of the inductors, the capacitors, and the resistor. So we can do series and parallel combinations. So Z1 is going to be the parallel combination of minus J3 ohms with this series combination of 3 minus J3. Take that impedance and take the product over the sum. So minus J3 times 3 is minus J9, and I have a J squared two minus signs multiplying, so I get an overall minus sign, and then nine. And the denominator of the two imaginary terms are going to be minus J6 and then plus three. Enter this in my calculator, and I'll get a magnitude and angle. And the magnitude here turned out to be 12.73, bigger than either of the two. The angle is actually a minus 135 degrees. We're in the third quadrant. And in the denominator, we have a magnitude a little bigger than six, and the angle is going to be in the fourth quadrant, because this is negative and this is positive. I get an angle of minus 63.4 degrees. So the overall magnitude is a ratio of these two, which is 1.897, and the angle is minus 135 minus a minus 63.4. That gives me a minus 71.6. Now that impedance is in series with J3 ohms, so I'm going to put that into rectangular form. Putting these two into my calculator, I get a magnitude and an angle in, and I get a real and imaginary part out. All right now let's add J3 to that. I get an overall real part the same of 0.598, and the imaginary part, the sum of these two, which is a plus J1.2. All of that is in parallel with J3. I'll take the product over the sum again. Multiplying the first term through, I get a J1.794, get a J squared, which gives me a minus sign, and then three times 1.2 is 3.6. Adding up the two imaginaries, I get a J4.2, and the real part stays the same. Enter my calculator, I get a magnitude a little bigger than 3.6, which is 4.02, and the angle is in the second quadrant, where I've got a negative real part and a positive imaginary part, and I get 153.5 degrees. The denominator, magnitude is a little bit bigger than 4, angle is very close to 90 degrees because it's much longer than this, and I get 81.9. So the overall magnitude is a ratio of those two, 
which is a little bit less than 1, 0.948, and the angle is the angle of the numerator minus the angle of the denominator, and I get 71.6. Now all of that's going to be in series with J3, so I'm going to put this into rectangular form. 2 in, my calculator, 2 out, get 0.3 plus J, 0.9. I'm close to 90 degrees, so this is going to be much longer than this, so that seems reasonable. Then lastly, we're going to add J3 to this. We get an overall value then of 0.3, and then J 3.9. Put that into polar form. Have a magnitude a little bit bigger than this, so 3.91. Angle again, pretty close to 90 degrees, but it's 85.6. And then my value for Z1, Z2, and Z equivalent are shown below. I give eight points for Z1, Z2, and Z equivalent. Further broke that down into four points for this, four points for this, and likewise for the remaining ones too. And this is the solution to exam one.